Tired of getting pop-ups and ads while browsing the web? TunnelBear makes it really simple app that allows you to browse privately and secure from anywhere in the world. TunnelBear helps people browse with confidence as well as bypassing online censorship or even those darn blackouts we hate so much when we're trying to watch an NBA game of our favorite home team. Try it free today at TunnelBear.com or download the app. Link in the description below. Over the past couple of weeks heading into the NBA draft, there have been many workouts, rumors, and movement from teams looking to grab the next draft steal. And of course, the Los Angeles Lakers had to get into this as recent as news spreading that the Lakers were interested in drafting the center Mitchell Robinson with their 25th pick in this year's NBA draft. But for those who have been watching this channel for a while, know that we have been watching Mitchell Robinson's moves for months and noticed his potential to be a draft steal among all the other talented big men even without playing a minute of college basketball. So in this video, we examine the positive and negatives for the Lakers in drafting a prospect like Mitchell Robinson and what potential role he might play in the NBA. First, the positives. At 7 foot, Robinson has something you can't teach, size. And from much of the footage shown from Robinson's game, he could fit the mold of the hybrid centers in today's NBA that can beat you from the outside as well as the inside, has decent ball handling ability, and can block shots with ease. But this was in high school. Many are still curious how effective Robinson can be at the next level. Scouts did not get to see Robinson this college basketball season, so he would have to impress in workouts and the draft combine. Unfortunately, Mitchell Robinson would not show up to the draft combine, but we would see video footage of his workouts with proven trainer Marcel Scott of Back to Basic Basketball Academy, who has previously worked with other NBA players like Anthony Davis. This is a good sign that Robinson is heading into the right direction and is working with professionals to improve his game. While this may be true, there are still negatives that may arise when considering drafting an unproven talent like Mitchell Robinson, such as his youth maturity, and fit with the team. The Lakers have drafted a highly touted big man out of high school before when they drafted Andrew Bynum with the 10th pick in the 2005 NBA draft. Bynum showed similar potential to Robinson in high school, but there were still questions about his maturity and conditioning in the NBA, and that showed up throughout his career. Bynum would be great in his early career. Andrew Bynum is already better than Dwight Howard. <laughs> I agree! I agree! Big man guy. Best big man in the game is Andrew Bynum. Oh, who's a doubt? The question was, who's the better center? Who's the better center right now? I don't care about Shaq. I don't care about C-Web. What do you think? Who's the better center? Give me Andrew Bynum. You are crazy. Give me Andrew Bynum. You are Give me Andrew Bynum. Bynum. but injuries and maturity issues really impacted his career. Three-pointer getting yanked by the coach. And people see that on the outside. They want to know, well, what's going on with Bynum here? Where's his maturity level? How do you explain I'm, all that? I'm very mature. And a lot can be pointed to his jump straight from high school. Mitchell may not suffer from these same issues with maturity, but it's definitely something to look out for. We must also take into consideration for the role he might play on the Lakers, if he is indeed chosen. The Lakers will have an interesting offseason this season when it comes to their roster and the center position. Currently, the Lakers have three centers on their roster, Brooke Lopez, Evicha Zubats, and Thomas Bryant. First, the veteran Brooke Lopez, who had an up and down time with the Lakers this season. Coming over in a trade from the Brooklyn Nets last season, Lopez saw a major drop in his numbers despite starting the majority of the Lakers games this season, dropping from 20 points per game on the Nets to 13 points per game on the Lakers. And despite having a 34 point performance during the season, the amount of low moments for Lopez on the Lakers outweighed the good moments, as his defense and rebounding was also a real issue during the season. While some of this can be contributed to the adjustment to a new role on a new team, Lopez's play this season may play a part in the type of contract he attracts this offseason. Getting paid close to $20 million the past three seasons and approaching 30, the Lakers could look to keep Lopez at a lower price to concentrate on a more solid roster. But if he walks, the Lakers will have to rely on their young drafted centers to produce, like Evicha Zubac, who was drafted with the 32nd pick in the 2016 NBA draft and showed some potential during his rookie season. But in his second season in the NBA, he played less, scored less, shot less efficiently, 
and snared fewer rebounds than he did as a rookie. Zubak would receive a lot more time in the G League during his second season and looked more impressive there as he put up 21 points and 9 rebounds by shooting 61% from the field in 14 games played. But Zubak needs to show this during the regular season to even be considered in the Lakers lineup. But that may be too late as the Lakers will have a team option on Zubak's contract this offseason as Lakers fans could see him waived even before the season begins. And that may be more and more of a reality as the Lakers' other drafted rookie, Thomas Bryant, is right on Zubak's heels when it comes to competing for minutes at the center position. Thomas Bryant, the second round pick in the 2017 draft, saw only 15 games in the regular season for the Lakers, but like Zubak, would impress more on the Lakers G League team, the South Bay Lakers, averaging 19 points and 7 rebounds, while shooting 59% from the field and 36% from three. But like Zubak, the Lakers will have a team option on Bryant's contract this offseason. This leaves the Lakers option at the center position open. With that said, drafting Robinson would mean the Lakers will be moving on from one of these centers at least, as Robinson would need playing time to develop. And this is totally possible as all three centers will technically be free agents this offseason. If drafted, Robinson can impress in Summer League and can immediately jump the Lakers center depth chart easily when injuries occur or they underperform, just like Summer League MVP Cal Kuzma, as the Lakers were forced to give Cal Kuzma minutes as he impressed so much in Summer League in the early part of the season. This can prove to be the Lakers' plan for Robinson if he is indeed drafted, and he could fit right into the Lakers' youth movement for the future if he falls. But what do you think, Laker fans? Leave it in the comment section below. But until then, it's been your boy, Johnny Walker LA, and I'm out.